Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to go over my initial impressions with Techland's Dying Light. Now in simplest terms, this is a combination of Dead Island and Assassin's Creed. It's basically Dead Island with parkour added into the mix. Now if you're not familiar with those previous games, basically this is an open world free running zombie game. You play in a city that's basically ground zero for the zombie apocalypse. It's been quarantined, it's been put on a communications lockdown, and there's some weird big corporate stuff in the background. You actually play an agent that works for a big corporation, and you've been sent in to retrieve some intel that one of the characters in the game is basically threatening to spread with the rest of the world that could either spread the zombie virus or potentially spread a cure for it. Although I haven't finished the storyline yet, I can't say that I'm too engaged by the writing. That being said, the city that they created is very detailed and you can pretty much run and jump on anything. There's plenty of explosive devices, random traps littered throughout the world that give you certain creative freedom with how you want to kill your zombies. During the day, the zombies play essentially classic zombie roles. They're slow moving, not that big a threat on their own, but in numbers, they can certainly take you down. You have to be on your game with parkour and know basically what you're doing with your weapons. You have very low stamina at the beginning of the game. This means that taking down one or two zombies can be a bit of a chore in itself. Figuring out how to distract zombies or using things like burning cars to lure zombies into them can certainly help out with taking down larger numbers of zombies, especially before you have the ability to, say, craft things like Molotov cocktails. And there is a crafting system in the game. You spend a lot of your time just salvaging random parts, and once you have enough parts, you can start learning new recipes and crafting things. Once you have a bunch of items in your inventory, you can do things like throw firecrackers to attract a whole group of zombies into one area, and then chuck a Molotov cocktail on top of them, killing a whole bunch of zombies. Once they've all been burned to a crisp, you can then loot their corpses and hopefully get enough parts to repair your weapons and make more things. I believe at some point in the game you may get firearms, but at least in the start you only get melee weapons, and you get a huge variety of melee weapons. Some of them are pretty goofy. You start off with basic things like baseball bats, lead pipes, machetes, knives, etc. But then you can start crafting weird weapons. You can electrify pipes to basically stun zombies or do sort of an AOE attack. You can use large pieces of rebar with concrete on the ends of them to get nice one-shot kills, assuming you can time it properly. And you can even use a cricket bat, which is actually a pretty darn good weapon and a nice little shout out to Shaun of the Dead. Fortunately, this game isn't going to make you eat just to stay alive. You can find little candy bars and pieces of food that basically replenish your health a bit. You can also craft first aid packs, but you don't have to eat and sleep just to stay alive. Now you can find little safe houses around the map, basically you can activate them by clearing out the zombies, closing gates, turning on the power, etc. And once you've activated the safe house, it acts as sort of a checkpoint and a respawn location. It also has ultraviolet lights which come in handy for protecting you at nighttime. Once the day-night cycle switches over to night, out comes the faster running zombies. The slow zombies are still scattered around everywhere, but now you have these crazy parkour zombies which will absolutely tear you up up and it is terrifying trying to run away from these guys. Now as I mentioned, there's lots of loot and things that you can find around the city. Sometimes you'll find a locked chest or a locked car, something like that, where you can pick a lock and that becomes a little bit of a mini game. The more rare or challenging chests are harder to pick and basically yield better rewards. There's also these cool things called supply drops when an airplane flies over the city somewhere, drops out a crate, you can open up your map, 
figure out where the supply drop is and try and make it there as quick as possible and get the loot. However, there are raiding bandits that will try and get there before you and sometimes you actually have to fight them off. As you level up your character, you can gain more health, more stamina, and new melee abilities, which actually help out quite a bit. Considering that a lot of your weapons have durability, it becomes very handy to perform some of your more parkour combat maneuvers like jump kicks and sliding kicks, etc. The combat system is surprisingly fun, although it can be a little bit jarring considering that you're always in the first person perspective and when you're getting tossed around the map or jumping and running and bouncing off of things, it can be a little bit nauseating at times. There's also a cool multiplayer aspect to this game. If you join up with friends, you can work on missions together. There's strength in numbers and it feels a little bit more team oriented. It's nothing like going through a zombie apocalypse with a few buddies to watch your back. And there's also an interesting PVP element added into this game where one player gets to play a super powerful zombie that basically gets to move around the map like Spider-Man and pounce on players, basically kill them in one hit. Um, and the players have to go around and try and kill spawning pits. This game mode can actually be surprisingly fun and pretty horrifying at the same time. You also gain experience for your single player character while doing this game mode as it kind of springs up randomly through the open world. So there's not like necessarily just a PvP game mode that you play on its own. These game modes kind of pop up as you set your multiplayer options while you're playing in your open world environment. Now again, I haven't finished the game here, so I can't give you a fully wrapped up review, but I can give you my initial impression. I will say that the storyline itself was kind of a letdown, it didn't really get me engaged with the game so far, and a lot of the early mission systems are very much errand boy missions that don't allow you to experience the open world game in a way that perhaps you might want to just get into right away. However, once the world does open up, you find yourself spending a lot of time looting and crafting. You need certain items to craft better weapons, get blueprints to make more things, get first aid kits, etc, etc. This can be fun if you really like crafting system games, but for me personally, I find it really boring. I would much rather focus my time on zombie killing and tactics rather than going around trying to make some sort of electrified pipe weapon, which kind of just looks ridiculous when you actually end up using it. And on that note, this game seems to be having a hard time deciding if it's a goofy zombie apocalypse game or a serious and somber one. Some of the characters in this game die trying to save your life and you feel indebted to them and you start to side with certain factions and then you go out and start hitting things with electrified pipes and using goofy gadgets to get zombie kills. It's got these weird conflicting elements. Now once you've gotten your chops down and figure out how to fight zombies and do all the cool little things with killing zombies and you go back to the mission system, the missions themselves are pretty boring. They're very much errand boy missions. The story just isn't interesting enough to really back up those missions. So you're kind of left with a boring game and storyline on top of a very detailed city that actually offers some fun on zombie combat. So once again, I haven't played this game from start to finish. I've put in about eight hours. They've got a nice detailed city with some pretty fun zombie combat. But if you're looking for a little bit more from a game, then I don't know if I would recommend Dying Light for you. However, if you can't get enough of zombie survival games, then this one will certainly float your boat for a little while. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.